went the wrong way, but even if you go the wrong way, you should be able to bounce off of what you just did. Like, don't over commit to whatever the move is. You commit to the way back on everything. Look how smooth that is. If you watch the foot that he keeps planted, like here, his right leg and his left leg comes forward. His right leg stays in the exact same spot. He just pivots off of each part. It's like he's a, um, a compass or something. You can see how many hours of shadow he's done doing that. It's so beautiful. And there, I have like an okay forward and back at times, but then I'll find myself in a position where I have to like stop because I've posted and it takes me a second to get back out of that position. You basically have to move around enough that you can move from any position. <laughs> He's making fun of me again. <laughs> this is what's so amazing about this session in particular and what he's teaching me is that he's teaching me skills not necessarily techniques like the techniques come out of this state of fluidity people don't teach you this people teach you like a kick or um, a combination or something which you can imitate over and over again until you're comfortable with it but since I've talked more about like femur style or more cow style, people have asked me like, where can I learn this style? Like which gym teaches this style? What they're talking about are people who teach knees or teach a lot of kicks. He's teaching you how to actually have the flow from which any of those styles come out. So Diesel Noy doesn't teach knees. He teaches you the forward aggression and energy of Moi Cao. Karahat is teaching the fluidity and movement of femur. Like, he's teaching the ethic of it. See how he just bends forward and comes back? He doesn't want me to stomp down. <laughs> See how fluid that is? And he just wants me to kind of, like, dance with him. Like, sway back and sway forward. It's like wind or like a wave or something. Hands coming forward from a distance and parrying me to the side. Again, this is similar to Karahat, who just kind of like folds, like windshield wipers and folds your guard down. He's doing it, but he's parry and tie. So he's parrying my front arm down and coming over it, but then he can also kick on the opposite side because it's, when he parries it, it's angling my body. This is a beautiful example of how to use a longer guard in Muay Thai though. He's not using the long guard in that he's not creating like a floor block, but his arms are out to interrupt mine as I'm coming forward. <laughs> he likes, likes and hates my elbows at the same time. <laughs> You just I hit him in the shoulder. You just kind of like, you just fold the arm down. You're not like slapping it down. There are different styles of this. If you watch um, Kru Karat in the Muay Thai library, he likes to hook the arm, hook the guard, push the guard down hard to force the opponent like into a broken position. Jarnsop, Karahat, they like to fold. Uh, you have Kampan, they like to just kind of like float over. So it's not an abrupt like, breaking of their um, posture with the force of the parry, but rather just kind of like guiding someone across their own body. This is a parry to across to the body. It was so effective. It was really nice. It's basically the same movement as when you parry a teeth. See how he's doing it that looks like parrying a teeth? But as you push it to the side, You've created an opening with the arm that parried, which is cool. He's coming across with the opposite side, but you can do both. Oh. It's totally like parrying a teeth. See how it just like, the elbow just kind of drops. The elbow stays in one place and the hand just like drops down like a, to me it's like a windshield wiper, but deep. <laughs> a deep windshield wiper. Oh, how fast is he? <laughs> Jesus, I'm laughing there because it's like so ridiculous how fast.
fast he is, but he was watching it now. <laughs> He's so fast. There we go. I'm creating actually two beats in the like parry and then the counter. He does it more or less as one move. He's he's trying to get me to feel this moving forward is the same as walking. It's the fluidity of walking, but you don't just walk. You add strikes to it. He likes that a lot. So that was the parrying the arm down and then bringing the elbow over it. See how his weight is coming forward and I'm twisting into him at the same time? That will only reach if my front leg is close enough to his front leg. You have to close the space on the parry. You can't dodge back on the parry and land that. So as a kicker, he spends a lot of time interrupting the opponent's legs. This is good because as a kicker, generally kickers go backwards. And so you're going to have someone coming towards you, usually with punches or something. And so by kicking their legs, you uh, interrupt their flow and you can interrupt where their weight is. So see how that punch is not going to land because I'm kicking his leg? So if you're a kicker or a backwards fighter, kicking the legs in order to set up your shot is basically a, a really good tactic to take your opponent off of their beat, mess up their weight transfer, and annoy them <laughs> as they're trying to come towards you. This was one of my favorite things as I was watching this to get ready for the voiceover. He pulls me in for the clinch and then doesn't even use his right arm at all. The reason he's doing that is because I'm a woman. He's trying to be polite. Like, by, by grabbing me, it's slightly transgressive. If I were a man, I don't think he'd be clinching me like that. But when I grabbed him and had strength, he was like, okay, good, you're good at clinching. But then look at how he responds. Instead of staying far away from me, he just starts finding the small openings in my grip, and he's like pushing me off to the side and parrying to the side. The leg kick is also really good against kickers because they're gonna try to middle kick, that's where the points are. And then when you go low, you interrupt their point. So now he's having me incorporate both of them. And I'm stepping over better. I think it's the bottom of the foot. I'm not putting my foot low enough on his leg. It should be like right at the crease. You're basically stepping on their foot. You're just right where the uh, where the shin meets the ankle. And then here he's showing how you can throw this jab off of that same fake teep. And so when you put the teep up, they might uh, brace against it or they might try to block, thinking it was a kick or something. And so you throw that jab when they're on one leg in response to whatever they think that teeth is going to be. But he wanted a little bit of a lean back on it to really sell the fake teeth. Uh, but it also gives you like a spring on the jab. <laughs> See how he covers distance on it and he does it. See how he leans back on it and he wants that knee up higher. So that's how you get them to flinch, basically, is by making it more of a dramatic movement. So what he's doing is what you would anticipate your opponent to be doing. See how he kind of uh, just freezes and his, his hands drop in anticipation of uh, whatever the leg is doing. And you can do it on the other side. See how he's doing it on his right side and it's almost like a Superman. He kicks the leg back as the punch comes through. But you don't hop on it necessarily. But on this side, it looks more like a kick is coming. So that's when you might anticipate that leg coming up for a block. And so now I'm just messing around with both sides. So, this is so 
something the car hot does. Adachai is a car hot fan. Uh, but starting from an orthodox stance, you switch your stance and then throw that jab. You can do it exactly the same from the southpaw stance and you just throw the same side as the leg that just kicked back. So there's my gallop step. That's the way I learned from Master K as well. Um, and again, when you guys are studying in the Muay Thai library and you get trainers who are teaching different from each other and they will say that the other technique is wrong for these reasons or those reasons because there are strengths and weaknesses to everything, no technique is wrong. There are different ways of pronouncing something. There are different vocabulary to say the same things. It's what works for you. It's what you will use and you feel good using. That's what creates the right technique for you. It's just important to see all of them, to protect and preserve all of them. I love this block. This is so cool. It reminds me of one that Sagat does. Sagat has this really long, like, bramble guard. Um, you can see that in the Muay Thai library. Kru Ali's is not the same. It just reminds me of it. But he folds his arm down across his face on the other one. It, like, creates a, a four figure a little bit. He's showing why you do this. If you're facing a puncher and you're trying to throw knees, you're susceptible up top while your knee is coming under, but that means that they're susceptible under while they're throwing their punches. So you want your power to win, and he's showing the block that you use for this. Oh, look at how his arm just folds into place. Look how light his hands are. And he says that you switch which one folds behind the other based on which knee you're throwing. So I'm throwing my right knee, means my left arm folds over my right. If I'm throwing my left knee, my right arm is going to fold into the crook of my left elbow. I'm pulling my arms down as I do it. He doesn't do that. His arms don't move down at all. They just kind of fall and lock into place. Oh, I think that's my favorite thing that he uh, taught me. But look at the length on his knee. He's holding the bag against me so that I'm forced to have balance when I come off of it. It's actually a really cool little um, teaching technique. Uh. He said if the opponent's only chance at this point is to knock you out, you just keep them away from you. Back in his day, you still had to use art form to like defend in the fifth round. Out of the <laughs> He said he hates this now, how people will just take the entire fifth round off. He doesn't like people just dancing from rope to rope at the end. He says, the minute the bell sounds, people are like done with the fight. It's like you have to fight from bell to bell. So this is leg kicks. So look again how he basically keeps his weight his balance on his back leg so that he can use his front leg for defense all the time. So if I want to come and kick his legs, he can just crush my kick shin to shin from either side. He's saying if you block too far to the inside, like if your knee is coming across your body too much, when they kick you, you're going to collapse that way. Like you're basically going to get like swept. So you want to kind of block out like that. He kind of planned his toe in a little bit. And I asked him about it, like it, it seemed on purpose, like maybe so that if someone kicked low, it could like sweep under or something. But it's, honestly, he just hurts everywhere. This is why I'm asking him, I'm like, if I kick down by your ankle, <laughs> it hurts so bad. He knows it hurts too. <laughs> He's like, feel my shins, they're like saws. <laughs> like, yes, they are. They're like, th 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 you can feel the little like, <laughs> they're like serrated.
bang like a tiger. So you just keep coming forward, and then once you grab, that's when you just devour your opponent. So as a knee fighter, your energy goes up when you grab someone. But it's basically this relentless pursuit of being able to grab someone, and you have to use these weapons to get in. <laughs> he's doing, <laughs> he's doing a nice rendition of a Muay Cow fighter there. So Dern means to walk, to like relentlessly go forward, and he's like Dern, but smart Dern. Like, don't just walk forward and get hit. So he's saying you can't only have energy, you have to have technique, but you can't only have technique, you have to have energy as well. And so I'm saying as a knee fighter, in rounds one and two, a femur fighter still has energy. So you can't just relentlessly go forward, you have to use these techniques to wear them down. But rounds three, four, five, they get tired, and a knee fighter never gets tired, so that's when you come in and really start chewing on them. So he's saying in Thailand, round four is the most important. So that's when you want to really take your lead. And then in round five, even as a knee fighter, you can kind of start going back and make someone chase you. But he's like, finish your job in round four, and then you don't have to worry so much about round five. He's saying if you if you win round four in Thailand, it's very hard for your opponent to come back in five. So now he's talking about show. So in the later rounds, you've already done the work to put in your weapons to wear out your opponent. But in rounds three and four, you want to demonstrate dominance more than you have previously. So this arching up where you're lifting the leg, this is showing in the same way that that sumrock elbow is showing that you're ahead. So you want to make your points more dramatic in rounds three and four to like really win those rounds. And I'm still like chicken winging my arm. So he can feel the difference on the end as he's like catching those punches. So I'm just trying to figure out what it feels like when I do it right and when I don't so that I can like self monitor which ones are what he's asking for so you can feel the technique. In the first hour, I didn't even understand how loose your shoulder has to be for these crosses that he's asking for. So see how everything is kind of coming out of my ribs? Even the kicks are like kind of coming straight. He's saying if you don't step in, you'll never reach your opponent. So see how I have to follow? If you have to follow someone, but your strikes are coming round, you'll never reach them. See how that comes out of his ribs? Look at his feet. His feet are how he generates the power on that. <laughs> Can you turn a little bit? No. He does not turn his fist. Like a lot of people corkscrew at the end of a punch. He's hitting with the same knuckles, but he doesn't, he doesn't turn. He hits with the same knuckles as if you're turning. But here he's explaining that if you twist your arm, you end up using your tricep. And what he wants is to use your bicep and your shoulder. He's telling me to stay flat-footed on the teeth, like you really plant yourself. He doesn't want me up on the ball of my foot like how you kick, because you want to be more stable on the push kick. <laughs> He's saying it's not a strong enough base if you're on the ball of your foot. Then you use your hip for the power. 
But see how I'm stepping forward and then using the teak as defense. So it's kind of an offensive, defensive teak. So I'm controlling the distance I want him to be at while closing my own distance instead of staying back. And there he's reminding me to use my shoulder to defend myself on that kick. See how he's trying to punch over it? That's why you... If I kick hard enough, it kills his punch. And if I keep my shoulder up, if his punch gets through, I don't get hit as in the face. You let kick. Yeah, you let kick. You know, you understand? The fun was strong. If you kick hard, they cannot punch. He's saying if you kick the ribs as they're punching, the punch is going to die, basically. Yeah. Yeah, kick win. Yeah, kick win. He wants me to kick harder so that it affects his punch more. Don't forget, don't forget, Sodo. So his punch is straight, so it's faster than the kick. So the kick has to be hard enough to affect his punch. So not scare, close, because we're tight. See how he's protecting himself with that shoulder up in front of his jaw. I can't reach him because I'm being interrupted by the kick. Keep longer, but yeah, together. Keep longer, but you just put it through. Ah! So now I'm getting the uh, keeping the arm up and rotating the shoulder, but I forgot to step. So you have many, have many it's blocks. constantly yeah. finding all the little pieces that work Not together. Only one. Not only like this. Yeah. Only like this. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So he's saying you can't only Dracula guard because then you're open yeah. for kicks all the time. So you have to, yeah. again, ah. fill in the holes and yeah. Good. make a system, a very simple mm. system that allows you to keep oh. coming forward. Look at him break that down, like a little dance move. It's like I'm in a hip hop class or something. And see how his shoulder goes behind him, but there's no like tension in pulling it back. It just somehow like rotates back in his movements. So I'm getting the, I'm getting the turn in the front, but I'm not pulling my left side back. So here he's showing how to go from this stance to move forward and land that hook. So you take a step forward, like you actually switch your stance for a second. Oh my Lord. Oh. He's like, you don't have to go far. See how he's just barely moving his feet here? You can move across the whole floor in that little dance step. His big step, fo like relatively big step forward, is just because his opponent moved. Just look at the weight as it goes back and forth. So see how he just made his feet square? He's like, you don't end up square. You want to make sure that there's always this distance between your feet. See how I squared up? he corrected it so you have to watch your feet see all these grids on the floor you have to make sure that you're covering a little bit of distance with each one but that you're not squaring up your feet because then you're off balance I keep squaring them up because I'm not moving that right foot see how his right foot moves after he takes the step to switch sides mine's staying exactly on that line his like his is like a little tail that like whips to the front. God, I could watch him do that all day. <laughs> 